wonderful. Thank you very much, Wendelin. Lovely session as always. Thank you, Wendelin. <coughs> Excuse me. So now it's over to you, Rakesh. Hey, hey. Wonderful. So I've been asked to talk about Dragon Dreaming and um, many of you who have done especially a full PDC with me probably know well we'll for sure know a little bit of the, the basics of, of dragon dreaming or maybe you don't remember it but i will have i invariably do go through some of the basics so i thought i'd rather than go through the stuff that i would normally go through i'd maybe start looking at a few other areas um but i'll just quickly run through some of the basics um just to to kind of bring everyone up to speed so like any tool, drag and dreaming it, uh, has a purpose, you know, every tool, whether it's a screwdriver, whether it's a paintbrush, you know, is designed for a particular reason. It's, it's designed to help us to do something more efficiently, more completely. It's a tool. And so uh, if we look at what was the purpose of this tool, then you start to get an understanding of how you can use it and how you can tweak it and how you can adjust it, et cetera. This is how I look at more or less every, every tool. I try and understand, well, why has someone actually put this together? What is it trying to address? What is that particular tool trying to solve? How does it help us? Uh, in which scenarios does it work? In which scenarios does it not work? And how can I then tweak it? How can I adjust it just a little bit? To actually make it work in each scenario so it's the same with dragon dreaming and what it's trying to address is looking at when people come together to work together to live together to do things together there's invariably certain patterns that um that do not work or how, a different way to put it quite often when humans come together because of all the conditioning that we've had, because of all the, you know, the continued um, media mentality, because of the school education system, because of the working system, because of the, the you know, the, the basic, basically because of the way in which we live, it's very difficult for people to work well with each other. We are continuously told we are separate, we're individual, we must compete against each other. And so it's very difficult, which is why there is so much mental um, imbalances, because ultimately we are pack animals. We, we live, we want to be in a pack. We want to be in a group because there's strength in that group. And, uh, you know, we just did a gift circle a few days ago at my local transition town. And just with so few people, there were so many incredible skills just in this small group that if we all shared those skills and helped each other you know it was really spectacular and, and this is the one thing that everyone pointed out you know how wow just with so few people we have so many resources and skills if we all just came together we can solve more or less everything no one would ever be needing anything in life so coming together working together is something that we really need to, to look at quite carefully. Um, <clears throat> as people know, I use things like sociopathy, but Dragon Dreaming also has a very strong part to play in that story. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, when the person who created Dragon Dreaming, uh, John Croft, started to look at, at all of the, the community projects that he was working on, he recognized certain patterns of where things would go wrong. And so Dragon Dreaming was a response to that. Now, he was born and brought up in Australia, and he was very much interested in Aboriginal culture. So through his studies of Aboriginal culture and working with Aboriginal peoples, he started to understand their mentality, this connectedness, etc. So a lot of Dragon Dreaming has its um, ethos and its, its fundamental principles based in uh, really ancient, traditional uh, community ways of thinking. So um, the kind of 
basics. Uh, I'll try and go through this, through this fairly quickly, but some of the, the basics that maybe you've heard before about the four mentalities and the four phases of a project. And so every person has a different skill that they have maybe really worked on that is really natural to them, to them that they've really nurtured because of maybe their vocation or because of you know for various reasons or just because of their mentality and so the the four mentality and uh, and the key thing is that every, everyone has a combination of all of these but if certain people have a particular trait to work in a think in a particular way it means that the language they use and how they communicate is geared towards understanding that and they may not understand the other person's way of thinking and expressing themselves and this creates tension so the four ways are first of all the dreamers and the dreamers basically just continuously dream they have ideas 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 no project would ever get off the ground no community would ever be built no amazing artwork or anything would ever be created if it wasn't for people who think differently dreamers an essential part of evolution absolutely essential having said that some dreamers find it very very difficult to actually put their ideas their thoughts into action so if you're expecting a dreamer to actually fulfill and complete a project you might be a little bit disappointed because um so what you need is, is people who can then take maybe this amazing, beautiful, crazy, abstract idea and somehow ground it and turn it into some kind of practical plan. So this is phase two, the planning order and the second type of mentality. Um, so they, as I say, can take these crazy ideas and try and work it. Well, how do let's actually turn that into something that we can actually see how we can actually deliver that. So they'll turn it into something practical. Um, then, but they're not necessarily the people who can actually implement it. So maybe another group, another mentality are people who are actual doers, can actually make things happen. Now, um, as you can see, all of these phases are absolutely essential. And that the key thing that is really important within Dragon Dreaming is how each of these groups think differently, express themselves differently, how there's different phases of a project where we have to create a dream, agree the dream. Everyone okay? Yeah, we, we th this is really what we want to make? Okay, great. Now let's plan how we're going to do that. Everyone agreed that this plan is going to work. We're, we're committed to making it happen and then implementation. Uh, and how those groups communicate between each other to get around that is essential. And but that's a very long story. I'm not going to go into detail there. But the main thing to say is how you express yourselves, how you communicate between these groups, because there's there's all kinds of challenges in communication between the, the different groups, the different mentalities, is really key to the success of a project. So as I say, so pretty much the phases. And I've only covered three so far, the phases and the mentalities uh, kind of correlate. So you have the dreaming, a dreamer and there's the dreaming phase. You have the, the planners and a planning mentality. You have the and planning um, at part of the actual project. And then you have the doers and the actual doing phase of a project. So the last one is probably the one that most people ignore and most projects fail to do properly which is officially called celebration but there's many aspects of it so it's not just about having fun and partying it the, the key thing is it's about reflection about uh looking at the dream this is what we wanted to do this is what we actually did and celebrating that and getting um yeah first of all is celebrating the individuals wow i mean wow look at what we have achieved you know you did this and you went out of the way and made that and all oh, when this went wrong you came and helped and made wow thank you so much and just taking time for each person to think about what amazing things they have done 
and for each other to pat each other on the back to say amazing so just this recognition but it's also about seeing well what we wanted to do was this what we actually did was this how different is it is it beneficial can we make use of that you know maybe what we did was actually far greater than what we imagined we were going to do at the beginning so that, wow fantastic can we incorporate this let's break this down let's understand how did we do this and can we make sure that we bring this into the next um project that we do or the next phase of a project and so but actually this celebration shouldn't be done at the end it should be done continuously throughout the entire duration of the project including the end so you can dream the dream plan the dream do the dream celebrate the dream dream the plan plan the plan do the plan celebrate the plan dream the doing plan the doing do it celebrate and so it's like spirals within spirals so this continuous celebration and this continuous uh say working together so that's kind of what i I, I spend, you know, normally at least an hour with each group explaining. So I've, I've kind of just kind of condensed that a little bit. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The next area that I'd look at is right. How do you actually start putting things together? How do you actually start making things happen? And how do you engage people to make sure that, you know, they really engage truly and they're really, you, they really engage joyfully how do they really truly engage joyfully so this is um this is a really beautiful part of of dragon dreaming so one thing i'd like to talk about is uh what many people may have heard of from a, an aboriginal perspective of what they call song lines so the aboriginals or a certain set of aboriginals believe that the the day begins when the great fire rises the great fire obviously being the sun and throughout the day you traverse you know you experience you explore you know you 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 live effectively in one aspect of your life um and then the day ends around a small fire and around that small fire is when you reflect on the day is where you share your experiences you share what you have done what you have seen and there's various ways of doing this one way of doing that is through song so you know so you pass on your reflections you pass on your knowledge you pass on what you saw you know so whether it's um explaining how you went off into a particular part of the of your landscape that you you may not normally go to and how you saw a particular tree growing or you saw a pond of water or you saw uh, a particular flower some medicine or whatever or maybe you observed how a particular snake uh was um you know maybe i don't know maybe it bit itself or something uh in a fight with another animal or something and and then it goes to a particular plant and heals itself with that plant which is actually a real story of how echinacea was uh, was actually discovered in case you're wondering um so it doesn't matter but you reflect you 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 look back at what you have done and you share this with the group and um and yeah and through doing this what they believe is it gives you a reason for living it gives you a purpose in life because now you know what you're doing, where you're going, why you're going, you know, so through these discussions, through these song lines, and then obviously everyone shares their song lines, but many of these song lines intersect with each other, they cross paths, they cross, and so you have these multiple song lines, which uh, one of the tools within Dragon Dreaming of how we can also utilize these song lines and actually create new song lines, you know, future song lines, is uh is the caribouette which is actually a project planning tool which i'm not going to go into for those who are 
dreamers and doers and who hate planning. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to kill you and bore you with planning tools. Uh, I've done that before. Trust me, I lost 90% of the people. But the planners were like, oh my, whoa! And everyone was like, uh, what? <laughs> so, yeah, not going to make that mistake again. Uh, if you're a planner, let's let's have a chat separately. Ooh, it's exciting stuff. Um, so, um, maybe a little bit about the, the, the different phases. How much time do I have, by the way? Is it another 15 minutes or 10 minutes? You've got 10 minutes, yeah. 10 minutes, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, one of the important things, and again, anyone who's worked with sociocracy with me uh, will know this because I actually bring this exact tool into my sociocracy practices. And it's called the dreaming circle. And the dreaming circle is where each individual thinks about, and there's various ways in which you can do this, you know, various visualizations or different ways in which people can start thinking about what they truly want from a project. What needs to happen in the next two years of this project to truly make this the most remarkable, most amazing, most beautiful project you've ever worked on, worked and, you know, um, and, you know, what's truly going to make your heart sing? What's truly going to make your heart sing over these next two years? What really needs to happen? So now people are saying there's various ways of framing it, but people can then start thinking about that. There's various ways of expressing it. I typically try to invite people to write it down first. So have 10, 15 minutes, however long they need to write it down so they've got some nice clear points at the beginning. And then in a circle, everyone shares one dream one aspect of it and if someone's already covered it you don't need to say it again because it's now from an individual dream it has now been expressed and is now part of the collective dream and so people go round and round in circles you know expressing 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 until everyone has expressed all the things and now we have this most incredible beautiful dream that is went from, as say, the individual to the collective. So then someone kind of uh, tidies that up, if you for want of a better description, praises it or whatever you want to call it, to, to kind of finalize it and put it into certain words to create, for example, from that, a dream. So the vision statement for your project. From that, you can very often then also create a mission statement as well. How are we going to actually put this into practice? What is the attitude with which we put this into practice? And then obviously uh, later on, you can then extrapolate from that the actual actions that you need to take to actually achieve this project. So very, very quickly, you've got, and I've done this um, really crazy project in, in a transition meeting where I was I had something like 40 people. I had three hours in which to get the group to express what projects they would like to do and project manage, make a design for how that's going to happen using 20 different tools. That was my task. I turned up, they said, by the way, you've only got an hour and a half. Sorry, we made a mistake. So literally, bang, 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 bang. You know, we took 30, 40 people's individual dreams, created a dream, created a project plan, started thinking about how we were going to do it using so many different tools so you know really incredible if you can facilitate this well you can really get clarity very very quick uh, very quickly the the next thing we can quickly talk about is the the planning part and the key thing around planning is to to really break the project down to think about you know the the order in which things need to be done and then more importantly, think about who's going to do it and really get people on board in a really creative way. And, you know, because quite often what you might find is someone, so for example, I can write, I can design websites, but do I get excited by it? If someone came to me and said, oh, Rakesh, can you create a website? Am I going to be excited? No, I'm not. I'm like, no, nah, mate, sorry, I do not have, no, nah, I'm just not that interested in sitting behind a computer for two months to create a website, sorry. But I know how to do it. 
uh, I just don't want to do it because it's not exciting to me. Whereas, you know, if someone says, can you come and help me to build a house? Yeah, 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 I'm on. Let's let's go. Let's do it. You know, so uh, or maybe there's something I don't know about that someone else would like some help with. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't really know how to do it, but I have a feeling I could be good with a little bit of guidance. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to have a go. So everyone can engage with projects in a different way. So we can start to identify who are the people with knowledge and how passionate are they to actually do this work and share this work? Who are the people who would like to have a go? Who are the people who are semi-skilled? And so we can kind of start to build up, you know, these connections between people, how they support each other, you know, because it's, it's pointless having someone who really doesn't want to do a job to make them try and do that job, you know, better. Hey, would you mind skilling this person? Because this person would really love to know how to do that. Would you mind spending some time with that person and sharing your beautiful skills with this person so that they can actually do it and just watch them and just guide them and be there be their mentor and they're probably much more passionate about that than actually having to do the work themselves so the planning is 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 really important and uh the doing equally uh is is important because you know if you've got no doers if you've got no if you don't actually make it happen it ain't happening you know what was the point in all that planning well maybe there was a point maybe there was you know many other outcomes to it but ultimately um you know, making sure that you engage all the different people in whatever capacity they can engage in, in whatever way they are comfortable to, to, you know, to actually work, is making sure that everyone somehow gets involved. In, no matter how small or how significant that action may be, but the fact is that everyone, if everyone gets involved, it really feels like it's ours. So even maybe the, the planner who's maybe not so good at, at doing and the, the dreamer who's maybe not so good at, at doing, if they can be doing just little bits of it, just the pride, the sense of, yeah, we did this together. Again, is really important. And the last bit, again, is the celebration. You know, and as I say, that celebration, the reflection just needs to keep happening throughout the project continuously, uh, continuously looking at what are we doing? What are we doing? Well, how who is doing that? How can we support that person? Does anyone need some extra help? Uh, is it moving in the direction we want it to move in? Is it, you know, are we getting outcomes that we ne couldn't even have dreamt that this could be an outcome? And let's really truly celebrate that wow look at what we have achieved and and see then in the next phase how can you bring that that joyfulness that you got from these unexpected outcomes how can you plan that into the next round that you're doing and so you know i use this the term you know what makes your heart sing uh continuously throughout this reflection process um I don't know if that works for everybody, but most people that I, I use this with seems to be able to resonate with that term. You know, what truly makes your heart sing? And uh, maybe I'll stop there. And I think there's maybe just one or two minutes uh, of this actual session. So if there's a burning question, um, happy to answer that. And then I think we're kind of into the break and. Maybe we can answer a few questions into the break if, if people really want to. So sorry, that was a little bit rushed. Um, but yeah, so any any feedback or any questions that people have about Dragon Dreaming? No? Um, I was going to say, I suppose um, one of the things I've noticed in a lot of our groups locally, so I'm involved in, Transition Town locally and, and other groups that um, maybe I shouldn't say on the recorded thing. Um, and uh, one of the things I've noticed is it often ends up being, I guess, probably the doers I'm thinking I might fall into who end up with all of the jobs. Um, and I think that can be one of the challenges is, is I think our celebration thing is so key because I think 
yeah, it can really easily group. I just noticed it grouped all over the place, just fall back to one or two or three individuals who end up keeping everything going. Um, and it's how do you celebrate other people's involvement so that you engage them more rather than, yeah. Exactly. And, and, and during the, yeah, when I really explore the mentalities properly, what people recognize very, very often is the language, for example, that the dreamer has with the, uh, you know, and how they express themselves to the planner, they're quite often very different languages. And then similarly with the planner and the doer, the, the, the doers quite often can be quite, uh, don't, don't, look, I know how to make a table. Just, 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 just give me the, the tools, give me the materials, I'll just make it. You know, and they'll look at your plan and why on earth are you making a table with three legs, one of which is shorter? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. No, no, no. And I'll just go and build it my way. Not recognizing that you were building it to go in a particular corner where there's a big stone that sticks out. So one leg needs to be shorter than the others just to fit in that particular corner. So they're not attached to the dream. They don't understand the dream. They don't understand the plan. They just go ahead and do it and invariably make mistakes. So it's all about how to cultivate these conversations between people, you know, how, uh, you know, very often what you'll find between the dreamers and planners is the dreamers keep dreaming. The planner then goes away thinking, right, OK, they, yeah, they've expressed it. Let me go and plan that. They come back and say, right, this is how we're going to. Oh, no, no, no. That was yesterday's dream. No, no, no. Today's dream. We're going to do this. Oh, so I've just spent all day planning and you don't even want that anymore all right i had a friend uh who said his wife was a, a dreamer and he was definitely a doer and a planner he said he'd give his wife when his wife would ask him and he i mean they're really in love with each other they're a really amazing couple he said that um if after four days see she still is asking for the same thing then i take it seriously and then i'll actually make it happen for her but otherwise, you know, the amount of things she comes up with, he knows it, it's, it's just going to disappear. But if she's still talking about it after four days, all right, now let's do it. So how do you have these conversations to get the, the dreamer and the planner uh, in sync with each other? Uh, and, you know, so at some point you need to say, tell the dreamer, right, bang, end of dream. Let me plan. Once it's planned, right. Uh, you know, that wasn't that part that you are thought of isn't actually physically possible you know human beings can't fly at the moment so if we're going to have two tree houses we can't fly between one and the other so we're going to need to make a bridge like a rope bridge or something you know because yeah sorry but we just can't fly um so okay and so then the dream can, oh a bridge oh ah ah maybe we can make the bridge from this and do da, 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 and maybe it can also oh, and, yeah. and then they can start dreaming again until you know, da, 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 you're in sync right now we're ready to pass it on to the dream the doer and then you have to have a similar conversation you know speaking the doer's language because let's face it many doers are impatient and they don't want to sit in meetings and so on and so forth so it's about it's all about the language it's all about really getting everyone on board with each other and then, as we say, really continuously celebrating. It's a really beautiful process. Um, it's brilliant. You've lit that is amazing how you've just summed up. I, I organised the Pride Festival as part of our transition group this summer, and I've realised I was in a group of dreamers and me. <laughs> and I've just realised why it was such a challenge. Because <laughs> yeah. they literally, everybody... Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, so brilliant. That's such a good... Wonderful. So I don't know how much time I think we we have a break until five two. So five like two. another six minutes. Another five, six minutes. So mm -hmm. gonna end the session there. Thank you all very much for listening. And um yeah, I think it's about time actually, Sophie. Maybe we did some kind of a community building experience where we can start doing dragon dreaming and all this kind of stuff again uh someday soon. I think uh, it's been yeah, it's been a long while since I did a proper course on like community building experience course. So mm. yeah, let's make it happen. Yeah, wonderful. It would be wonderful. Enjoy your breaks. <laughs> See you soon. Five minutes. See you in five minutes.